G'day. Thank you for watching this um, talk by Catherine and me on what may happen when you have a sparsely populated area between two densely populated population centers. Now, population density has always varied. Um, I show the situation 150,000 years ago and just recently from Wikipedia. You see that the density distribution is quite stable, but of course the absolute values have increased with time. And we see that in the old world, we have three main population centers separated by low population density areas. Now, the Denisova cave is one of these sites, famous sites, that's in a sparsely populated area. So the yellow dot on the maps. And the Denisova cave and such sites often show a very rich history of hominin occupation and, and interaction. So why do we have so, so much action in a place like the Denisova cave? What does it tell us about human evolution? Was it on some corridor or was it on the boundary between the main species, some other things happening? Before we try to answer these questions, we first need to consider the effect of population density on the evolution dynamics. So the question here to address is what is expected to happen in a sparsely populated area between population centers? e.g. between Southeast Asia and Europe. Now, we use this numerical model that we published uh, in 2019 in PLOS 1, which is based on DEMS, so pixels in the models, and each pixel represents the dominant genome. And several things can happen, like uh, mutations, typically competitive mutations can occur, adjacent DEMS can interbreed, so we have demic diffusion, uh, we have included these sort of assortative mating, and we also have a situation where highly competitive teams can sweep over their neighbors. Now, in the published uh, paper, the result was that migration sweeps tend to emanate from large consolidated populated areas, like Africa was. But in that model, we only use the constant population density. So what would be the effect of differences in population density? First, we look at mutation rate. So here defined is the number of mutations that reach fixation or at least dominance in a population, i.e. a deem per time unit. Now in a population, the number of new mutations is proportional to the number of individuals. But the time to reach fixation is also proportional to the number of individuals. So the two cancel out. Mutation rate is approximately independent of population size and therefore density. So mutation rate as such is not a main factor to consider. The diffusion is. Uh, in a model, we always compare two neighboring populations, so two teams, where one has a certain mutation and the other one not. So 50% of the joint population has a mutation. Now, the time to reach fixation or extinction for a neutral mutation is proportional to the number of individuals. Now, that in the end means that diffusional spreading the diffusional spreading coefficient is inversely proportional to the number of individuals. So, the population density. That means high population density, slow demic diffusion. Uh, the same holds for competitive mutations as long as the competitiveness is small, which it usually is assumed to be. You should also know that if you have gradients in population density, that a larger population is of course more likely to pass on mutations or genes to a smaller neighboring population than vice versa. So here I show a simulation. This is a map view. Uh, evolving over time, where we have a low density area, the dark area in this map, between two uh, densely pop populated areas, as you can also see in the graph below. Now, the colors in this model indicate differences between genomes of the individual teams. You've seen a very uh, fuzzy area in the middle where things change uh, rapidly. So there we have fast diffusion, and on the sides, everything happens a bit slower, but we also get the same number of new genes and mutations. And <laughs> mutations wander into the middle area from both sides. Another factor to consider is assortative mating, which is the tendency to reduce interbreeding between unalike individuals. So if you have fast diffusion, so low population density, 
that would reduce the differences between populations, so the gradients. And then that, of course, reduces assortative mating. So the result is that you get areas with gradual and fluctuate, fluctuating variations in genome. On the other hand, if you have slow diffusion, so a high population density, um, you get high gradients, so big differences between uh, popula adjacent populations, and that encourages uh, the effects of assortative mating. And what you actually get is nation-like regions, so regions in which individuals have much more interaction with others within the region than with those of neighboring regions. The final thing to consider are migration sweeps, uh, which is when one population is more competitive than its neighbor, it may uh, be tempted to just overrun its neighbor. Um, so that would be a one dim replacement or migration sweep. But if it is more competitive than one neighbor, there's above zero chance that it's also more competitive than its next neighbor. So this process can repeat, and this can result in occasional migration sweeps that cover large area. But still, uh, we have many, many small sweeps for a few big ones. Turns out that the swept areas approach a power law distribution, as we showed in the 2019 paper with an example graph on the right. So if you now put everything together in a model, again, we see uh, the fuzzy region in the middle where there's rapid diffusion, and now we see uh, the occasional migration sweep where the whole color changes. And on the right, we start to see sort of crystallizing zones which represent these nations. Now, when there is a sweep, it usually spans the whole low density area. But not always, but often it holds where population density increases. It's just much harder to overrun a population that is much bigger than you are. So the low population density area experiences periods of diffusive exchange and occasional sweeps from either side. So the expected result, if you go back to the world map, or at least the map of the old world, is that we get differentiation, speciation between the main population centers, so Europe, Africa, and Southeast Asia. And between that, in the low population density area, we have diffusion or spreading, especially from, uh, of, of mutations that arise within these areas, but also um, mutations, genes, that wander in from the high population density areas, so these population centers. And then occasionally you get migration sweeps, small ones and big ones. And uh, once they get into the low dense population density area from one of the population centers, they have a good chance to sweep a long way. So coming to the conclusions, isolated densely populated, populated areas differentiate by isolation, but also uh, one factor to consider is um, difficult for genes from outside the population centers to enter from the sparsely populated areas to enter the densely populated areas, so that creates additional isolation. Sparsely populated areas in between see a rapid spread and exchange of genes by diffusion, and they also receive genes from the population centers adjacent to them. But we have migration sweeps. Uh, they tend to come from the population centers and they can easily sweep large sparsely populated areas. So what we would expect is that populations in sparsely populated areas are prone to say hybridization because of this diffusion but also sudden alterations in characteristics from adjacent population centers due to sweeps. So sometimes the sweep from the west comes in, sometimes from the east, you will see sudden changes in the population. And that were this, and I thank you for your